Mark, I'm trying to see nice things about you. Mark, listen up, come on. I'm, I'm trying to see nice things about you. Stop tidying up, it's your birthday. Save it till the end, at least Adrian will do it. Yeah. Uh, for those that, for those that know our mother very well, uh, we understand it's a little bit confusing that we're celebrating her 60th party because for at least the last five years she's told everyone that she was already 60 and, and now I believe you're telling everyone that you're on your 61st lap which means nothing for everyone else but for the rest of us it still means nothing you know just, that, that's what she refers to um, thank you all for coming as I said thank you very much my love for making this amazing this amazing evening uh, for those You'll realise soon later that um, for those of you that came here for a bit of food, a bit of dancing, uh, you know, mingling, uh, I'm, I'm so sorry because that's not what's, that's not what's going to happen. Um, Mar doesn't do things by halves, and uh, that will be the rest of the evening. Uh, there's a few performances coming up, um, some better than others. We hope uh, we'll see. Um, and so, without further ado, I'm going to pass over to my to my father, uh, who's going to say a few words. Um, thank you. When Sarah um, asked me what I could do for the party, um, and I said, well, we could do maybe some entertainment or something like this, and I said to her, how, what, how do you want me to play it? And she said, I want it to be a complete surprise, and I want to be completely informed in advance. <laughs> So I don't know how much of this is a, a surprise. But first of all, um, um, thank you so much all for coming here. And um, I just wanted to mark the moment by talking about five qualities of my wife, which I think, I hope you'll all recognize um, in some way or another. And because I think that it, it, it's, there, there are five, that in my mind, there are five clear things about her, which I think are why we all love her and why we all come to an event like this tonight and will remember an event like this for a long time. So first of all, I think she is, to say, she is a very kind person. She is a extremely kind and loving and caring person for, um, and for other people. She's always supporting other people and she never makes a big fuss about it. She just gets on and does it. And when she goes to Uganda, she has so many people there who she has helped, but she doesn't ever talk about it, but there are so many people there who are sort of grateful to her for the help that she's given in different ways uh, and supported them. And partly that kindness is why she so engages with people. She so likes uh, to, to be with people. And I'm going to come on to another quality that's associated with that. Secondly, she's a really funny person. She's a really wonderful, wonderful sense of humour. She's extremely clever and a very dry sense of humour. So, just a couple. She's, no, she's never funnier than when she's talking about Uganda, her own country and home. But if there were anyone else saying it, it would be not funny, and it could have almost even been offensive. But when Sarah talks about it, it's funny. So here's one joke she says, which I always find. She goes to Uganda, and then she comes back, and she says, when are Ugandans ever going to realise that, ooh, you've put on weight, isn't a greeting? <laughs> Absolutely true. <laughs> and she also says, I got to use wonderful impersonation of Uganda. She says, You know Ugandans, they direct they direct you with their mouth. <laughs> Do you know the way to where, where, where's the food? <laughs> it's over there. <laughs> Thirdly, this sounds a little bit sort of cliche, but it's she's a brilliant cook. <laughs> She's a brilliant cook. She makes all these wonderful stews and sauces. It's entirely of her own making, and she never ever writes anything down in a recipe. But some of it is very experimental. My boys were brought up uh, for years and years on broccoli pizza. Uh, <laughs> and, and, but much so seriously, her cooking is amazing, and it gets better over the years, and it's really very, very nice. 
I think the fourth quality I want to make is that she's got a very, she's a, she always brings colour to every situation. She's a very, very colourful person and she's amazing clothes and, 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 and she's a natural party giver. So there's always that colourful element that she, she brings. And she's extremely positive, that's my fifth quality. She's always positive. So she's always turning adversity into something good. So she's turned all the skills that she learned with, uh, with, uh, that she picked up with Matthew to make a sort of career out of it. And she's always um, had made, made uh, yeah, she's just made things great out of adversity. And that comes back to what Anthony was saying about, she's never been afraid of her age. She's always been happy to celebrate being up at whatever birthday she's a t uh, a, 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 a achieving. And I said there were five things, but when I was writing this, and there was just another quality which came out, suddenly sort of wrapped it all together, together which is just that she likes people. So, sort of, which is quite unusual, because not everybody that is like that. <laughs> she, just, she really likes people. And that, perhaps, is why she finds it so difficult to get off the phone when she's <laughs> talking to people. And so, you, you, I'm sure people will recognise the conversation that they have with Sarah. When they're coming, they've, they've been speaking for 25 minutes, and she'll say, OK, bye, 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 bye. OK, bye. <laughs> and how's Laura doing? <laughs> Right, okay, right. And 15 minutes later, the conversation goes on. She actually finds it quite hard to separate, to end the conversation with people. And just about two months ago, we went back to Brussels, where we lived for eight years. And we just dropped in on a local shop, a Tunisian shop, where we have some friends, people, a, a whole family, grandfather, mother, daughters, daughter-in-law, baby, new grandchildren. Sarah came in and I wondered whether they would even recognize us. And within 15 minutes, we have the pictures of Sarah at the center of the family holding the baby and the entire family all around her. And that's just a sort of typical, sort of, uh, uh, a typical sign of her, sort of the, the influence and the magnetism that she has. So kind, funny, good cook, <laughs> colorful, positive, and she just loves people. So I think those are pretty great qualities. Just quite things I want to mention. One is that my sons will remember that there is never ever been a single birthday in their life when she hasn't produced a cake. Usually with some sort of mystery, some sort of kind of big surprise that she produces. Even when they think that it's not going to happen, they suddenly she produces it. And she's developed recently a slightly worrying habit. Uh, which I think is probably going to get worse as time goes on, which is that she goes out in the mornings and she walks the dogs. We, we don't have dogs. <laughs> but, she, but, but, but these are her imaginary dogs. So she, goes, so she has names for them. She, she, she has a whole life for them. So. And, and, and I, th I don't think there's any way of getting out of it. I don't that's going, going to continue. But it's a very nice kind of little fantasy. I ask you to indulge it. <laughs> if she ever talks about it. So when she, Sarah was younger, I'm not going to take you through her life story. I did that with her 50th. And then I think we'll... But one thing she did was when she went to um, school in Nigeria, when she was a teenager to do her uh, A-levels, um, she came to... Um, uh, you, uh, she, um, I've done this in the wrong order. Oh, sorry, uh, I'm gonna go back to. So I'm now, we're now, we're now actually going to sing a song. We're <laughs> <laughs> supposed to stick to the script. We're going to sing a song. Okay, let's just sing a song. Okay, so this might need a little bit of um, audience participation, so I might ask for your help in between verses. You'll probably recognise the song, and I'm grateful to Anthony for providing the guitar backing. And then after that, we're going to sing another song, and Peter and Gilberto are going to join in as well. So this will be two songs. Just to warn you, this is a two-song programme. It's going to last about ten minutes. Okay, so... So... Um, so it's all about Sarah. <laughs> Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens, bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied up with strings. 
I'm not sure if those are her favourite things. <laughs> Let's try again. Cream coloured ponies and crisp apple strudels, doorbells and sleigh bells and schnitzels with noodles, wild geese that fly with the moon on their wings. Nice, but still not quite Sarah's favourite things. I think I might need some help here. Okay, so could you have a little bit of um pa pa um pa pa um pa pa CDs in the car, country music, French lessons, church bills and incense and thickers, investments, huge heavy suitcases, stuff full of things, endless long phone calls when anyone rings. <laughs> <laughs> Trips to Uganda, basutis with sashes, not too much makeup and no false eyelashes, hot chili spices that oh, make yes. your mouth sing. <laughs> These are a few of her favourite things. When the door bites, when the bee stings, when she's feeling sad. She simply remembers her favourite things And then she won't feel so bad Chickens and boiled eggs and cows and goat herders Colombo, Miss Marble and Midsummer Murders Played to Uganda with super fast wings Card games and Scrabble as long as she wins <laughs> <laughs> Any who done it, no matter how crappy, in a cinema film if the ending is happy, cranky teas everywhere, moisturised skin. Oh God, we know that's our favourite thing. <laughs> when the plane lands, when the frost bites, when she's feeling bad. She simply remembers her favourite things And then she won't feel so bad Earrings and mangoes and almond that lingers Massage demands that will bone crush your fingers Amazing <laughs> bright costumes with colours that sing These are a few of her favourite things Three sons and a husband she's loved and adored us We've kept our heads down and followed her orders <laughs> Affairs, extra marital fleas. I hope that those are the favourites. <laughs> when a man snores, blast through three doors. When she's feeling mad, she simply remembers her favourite thing, and then she won't feel so. Sleeping in car parks and sleeping in thunder Sleeping through earthquakes that makes us all wonder Up late at night full of zest and of zing And mornings are so not her favourite <laughs> Dancing aquangulars, weddings and functions Fridays for tennis and roses and luncheons Idris on TV while Barry White sings <laughs> <laughs> Those are quite truly her favourite <laughs> <laughs> Now she's 16, going on 17 <laughs> <laughs> Fellas will fall in love Fellas you meet will tell you you're sweet Ah, oh, sorry that's another song isn't it? <laughs> We'll do that next time. Okay, now everybody join in now. You all know the words. When the door bites, when the bee stings, 
Peppers, <laughs> and then we won't see. 